Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast Minisode, episode Kilo 5 for Sunday, the 10th of April, 2016. I'm Amos and this is a show where, well, I talk about whatever I want. And today, I would like to tell you about Jack. So, I met Jack uh, in 2005 um, under the pretense through a mutual acquaintance of uh, doing some D- Dungeons and Dragons and uh, having a lot of fun with that. And Jack and I, we became pretty good friends pretty quickly. Um, we had a lot of fun playing D&D. Uh, we would, outside of D&D, we would talk about just anything under the sun. And it was a really, it was one of those intellectual uh, conversations every time I talked to him, whether we were talking about anime or Dungeons and Dragons or science. Um, didn't really matter. Everything that we talked about was just amazing. Like we had to allocate time for these, for these discussions. Um, he was, he was an amazing, an amazingly creative person. Uh, very lively ideas just flowed out of his head. And, uh, he, he was just, just astounding. There was never a time when I wasn't amazed by his intelligence and his perspective on things and his ability to to put everything, you know, to objectify everything and break it down to its smallest pieces and reconstruct it in the same argument and, and the same discussion and rebuild an entire, uh, an entire uh, perspective, an entire situation. It was, it was just amazing. Um, so we played D and D. Of course, in two thousand six. Um, I started going through my divorce, so I started, my marriage started breaking down. It was, it was already broken as it was, but it really started, you know, the, the cracks were no longer mendable and, um, the, the fissures between my ex-wife and I had grown to, to such a, a chasm that we weren't seeing eye to eye. We weren't, we weren't able to find a middle ground anymore and things started really, really breaking down. And Jack was one of those people that even though he and I were, were, were good friends and we talked about everything under the sun, um, he was one of those people that could break things down in a way that, that would help me understand uh, my ex-wife's perspective on things and really brought a lot of light to the situation. He, he was, in, was not a marriage counselor in any way, shape, or form. Uh, he, he just had a different way of looking at every situation, and it was, it was amazing. So we continued to play D and D. In fact, that was that was much of my solace during that time. Breaking away, playing D and D, and just being able to escape. It was, uh, you know, some people resort to alcohol or drugs or whatever, and D and D was kind of kind of my my escape at the time. And uh, throughout two thousand six, um, you know, and, and I met a lot of other great people that way. Uh, and, and our core little group, which I mean, you can see a little picture right here if you're watching the video. Um, our core little group, uh, was great. We, you know, it was, it was an amazing friendship that we all had and, and, uh, it all started through D and D and that's how we all met and how we all discussed things. And and it became this, this great group of people, all of which I'm still in touch with now. Um, so then 2007 comes along and, um, my ex-wife and I separated So I needed a place to stay. We were living in Hawaii at the time and being military, there's financial concerns and everything else. Essentially, I didn't have any money to find a new place. And Jack owned a two bedroom townhouse, uh, up on the, up on the Hills. And he was like, Hey, why don't you just come crash at my place? That was such an amazing experience to be away from, from my core family, from my, my, my now ex-wife and my daughters and not living in my house, not having any of my stuff. I basically just had a, a suitcase worth of stuff, but it was immediately almost home. I, I would walk in and we would just, we would just sit down and watch TV and we would talk and we'd, you know, we'd drink tequila and oh man, so much tequila. And on the weekends, we would play Munchkin and Dungeons and Dragons and just sit around and shoot the shit with, with our core group of friends. And, you know, when his, when his 
girlfriend and then wife and everything uh, moved in and it, it didn't change things. It was just, it was still just us, uh, you know, the core group just having an amazing time. And, and, and it was such a, an escape, such a healthy escape from all the turmoil that a divorce can bring. And it, and it was great. It was just amazing. So, um, that, uh, you know, th- that was consequently my introduction to Mac, to Apple Mac products and, uh, been a fan pretty much ever since. But anyway, um, one more thing that, that Jack brought into my life. Um, in 2008, my divorce, uh, well, the wars finalized, uh, late 2007. Um, I found a new, my own apartment, everything else. And once that, once all the divorce stuff went through, I got my fan- finances together moved out, found an apartment and we kind of just started separating ways. Everybody, you know, we were all in the military in Hawaii and everybody started moving and we started keeping less touch with each other. And it, it was, it was one of those situations. Everybody just started moving on with their life. Um, I remember in, uh, 2009 that we had gotten in touch with each other through Facebook and we were texting back and forth and it, it culminated in this conversation. We talked for, uh, I want to say upwards of three and a half hours. And we were both going through times. We were both going through separations and from people we loved and kind of changing directions in our life. And we had different things we were looking forward to. And it was, it, for both of us, it was kind of a, a crazy time. And that was all of about 30 minutes of the conversation. And we, we kind of got that out of the way. Then we just started talking about other stuff. And it was, it, I mean, it was by telephone, but it was still just him and I sitting on a couch just talking about stuff, just everything, anything that came up, politics and uh, science, um, everything. It was, it was just an amazing conversation. And as the story always goes, we vowed to continue contact and to talk and and keep in touch. And of course, as the story goes, that, that fell apart. We, uh, we never got an argument or anything else. We it, it just, life takes its, takes its paces. And we, we never really made time for, for each other and, and the conversations that we had, which leads me to 2010. Um, April 12th of 2010, I received a phone call from Jack's uh, now ex-wife, which, I mean, they had parted on the best of terms. It was was the most lovely of divorces ever. It was kind of crazy. But I don't know that Jack ever really recovered from from that. And anyway, um, on uh, on April 12th, I'm pretty sure it's April 12th, of 2010, I received a phone call from, from his ex-wife that, uh, that Jack had been found dead. Um, Jack had decided that it was not worth it to continue on this earth. And, uh, So on or about uh, April 10th of 2010, Jack took his own life. This, this doesn't seem like a, a typical podcast episode that we'd want to put out there and stuff like that, but I think it's got a really important message that uh, every year since then, I've sat down and had a beer with, beer with or for Jack, whoever you want to believe. Um, and this year I figured I would share that. And, uh, it got me to thinking, um, I'm in the military. I've been for 20, almost 21 years. And we're always talking about, uh, suicides and the effects that it has on people. Um, I don't know that people really understand the impact that they have. And... I really, really wish we could just let people know how much they mean to us. So, um, 
So a, a few statistics here. Uh, according to the American Foundation for, for Suicide Prevention, uh, suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the U.S. Uh, 42,000 plus people, Americans kill themselves each year. Um, that's uh, it's roughly 12, almost 13 people per 100,000. I mean, percentage-wise, it's not that impressive, but um, on average, there are, are 117 suicides per day. Uh, and it's highest for middle-aged white men in particular, and men are four times more likely to commit suicide, although females or, or women are, are, are three times more likely to attempt. And what I want to do is I want to take, I, I, I never shy away from this opportunity, and, and I figured today was a great, a great chance for it. Um, for me to ask you three things. One, uh, tell people you love them. Reach out and tell them. Uh, even if it's not an affectionate love, even if it's just a, a mutual respect or a, a particular admiration, a professional admiration even, let them know that they're appreciated. Let, let them know. Let the people that you work with know. Let the people that you, that you converse with, that you see on a daily basis, let them know how much they actually mean to you. Uh, and when someone's troubled, uh, don't, don't, don't blow it off. Uh, try to understand exactly what they're going through and, and see if, even if it's just something minor, see if there's something deeper in there. And by all means, uh, never, ever take a suicidal comment or threat lightly. Never. Uh, I don't know that we ever received, that he ever, ever gave any warning but Jack's gone now, and there'd be there. There's many times that I wish I I had known that I had forced myself into communicating with him so that you know at least at least he knew there was a voice out there. I don't I don't know if he knew there was one out there listening that wanted to uh, wanted to listen that cared. So, um. And if, I mean, I, I hope it's not the case, but statistically, it, it is. Uh, somebody listening to this show is considering suicide or knows someone who is. And reach out. Reach out. If you tell someone what's going through your mind, try to get the help that, that people can give. It, it's... There are better ways to deal with problems, and nothing, nothing is permanent until until that. So everything's fixable. Keep that in mind. Even if uh, even if you want to anonymously send an email to this show, I mean, I'm I'm not a trained counselor by any means, but reach out to someone and let someone know that what's going on and how and. And l share your problems with people so that you're not dwelling on it by yourself. And, and maybe someone sitting right next to you has has the solution. Um, the solution is definitely not suicide, regardless of what situation you're in. So, on the sixth anniversary of uh, Jack not finding a solution, this is to you, Jack. I hope the ether is treating you well. Um, you can find me on uh, on Twitter at Ethan Kane. You can find the show on Twitter at Ritual Misery. RitualMisery dot com's got all the links to everything. Kevin McLeod gives us our music, and you can find you can email us at podcast at RitualMisery dot com. Please, like I said, if, if there's something going on out there, tell someone, even if it's just some shitty little internet show. It's worth it to continue going on. And there's so much more out there than what you see, what you can see. If the suicide's a thought, we can make it work. We can make something better happen.
Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>